Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we are talking about Tesla China sales for October. We've also got some updates on Giga Berlin, news on a Tesla feature, update from Idra on Giga Presses, and a few other items as well. Quick look at the markets, the Nasdaq today continuing to fall after a negative reaction to the FOMC meeting yesterday. Trend continues today with the Nasdaq down one and three quarters percent. Tesla though with a nice outperformance finishing barely in the green up about a tenth of a percent, closing at $215.31. Before we get into today's news, we've got a quick possible scheduling update. Barron Funds today tweeting out that Barron Capital CEO Ron Barron will be interviewing a surprise guest CEO tomorrow at Barron Conference 2022. They say that some might say our surprise guest is one of the greatest entrepreneurs in the world. Can you guess who it is? Well, if that doesn't end up being Elon, I would feel kind of bad for whomever that is, but I would have to imagine that that most likely Elon Musk, but we'll find out tomorrow that is scheduled for 1040 a.m. Eastern time. Looks like this will be streamed online, although you do have to register for the conference, but that's free to do. I will put a link to that in the description for those that are interested, but of course we'll talk about anything that may come up on Tesla Daily. And it looks like this event is actually not on the agenda, so we don't really know how long this might be. All right, getting into the Tesla news, even though we're just a few days into November here, we do already have a report from the China Passenger Car Association about Tesla's wholesale sales in the month of October. So remember that is retail or domestic sales plus exports. We don't have the breakdown between those two figures yet, but Tesla's wholesale sales in China in October came to 71,704 vehicles. If we put this into our Tesla China table, we can see in yellow here that this is actually down a decent amount month over month. September was about 83,000. So October down about 11,500 vehicles from September. Now this is the first month of the quarter, so it does make sense to kind of look back and compare to previous first months of the quarter. We don't have great comparisons because we had shutdowns in April, then in July we had downtime for production upgrades. So while this is a wholesale sales record for the first month of a quarter, really the only two quarters that could have challenged that had significant impacts during that first month. So it being a record, that's not really all that meaningful to me after these production upgrades. That definitely should be the expectation for it to set that record. So I am more interested in the month over month comparison if we look back at those historicals. Aside from those periods where we had those known shutdowns affecting things, this is a more significant drop than what we have seen historically on average from the last month of a quarter into the first month of the next quarter. For example, September to October last year went from 56,000 wholesale sales to 54,000, so a bit of a drop, but only a 3% drop in that case versus a 14% drop here. All right, so does that mean that this is a bad number and does this cause Q4 expectations to drop a little bit? Mm, maybe. We just don't really have enough information yet. Of course, when we receive these numbers, what is always most important to me is production. I think Tesla's going to sell these cars somewhere eventually, but usually this wholesale sales figure gives us some pretty good insight into where production is going to come in. If we look over the last three quarters, the production number in the first month of the quarter has come in eight to 10,000 vehicles higher than wholesale sales. If we visualize this over the last couple of years, we can see that in every case, production has exceeded wholesale sales for the first month of the quarter. So that overproduction is shown in pink here. And again, pretty consistent in the first month of the quarter. So for October, I would expect that we do have another 10,000 or so that have been produced that have not been marked as sold yet. Remember that can be vehicles sitting in a lot, whether that's a parking lot at Giga Shanghai, whether it's a parking lot at a port, or those vehicles can be in transit on a train or a car carrier going who knows where. So that's where the mismatch comes from. Eventually that shakes out as Tesla then sells more vehicles than they end up producing in one month, usually the last month of the quarter. But of course, Tesla's starting to unwind that process per their communication a little bit in Q3. That shift in strategy means that the trends that we have seen with these numbers historically may not necessarily apply the same. So I know a lot of analysis to kind of wind up at the place of we just need to wait a little bit longer for more information, but that's kind of where we're at. Personally, I'm definitely hoping to see a number above 80,000 vehicles produced in October. Even 80,000 would be a little bit lower than what I would have expected based on what we know about Tesla's production run rate. But we did have that period of time early in October where Tesla was offering three times pay to work through the holiday, but we don't know the number of people that opted for that and the associated impact to production. So even once we do get the production number, it might not be worth overweighting that for November and December in terms of run rate. For example, if we do come in at 80,000, it doesn't necessarily take 90,000 off of the table for either of those two months. 
Last thing I want to note on this is that as we are looking at one month snapshots, there can be more variables at play. We've got a tweet here from Ray for Tesla that shows a lot of Model Ys waiting for inspection and registration. Apparently there's a backlog of 40,000 Model Ys still waiting to be delivered. So who knows how many of those are counting in these wholesale sales figures. Any sort of backlog like that could suppress these figures relative to production. All right, next up, we've got a couple of updates on Giga Berlin. The first one coming from Tobias Lind. We talked last week about how Tesla was ready to begin clearing some trees, opening up some more land at the Giga Berlin property. That was 70 hectares or about 40% more space. So Tobias has shared a new satellite image of the Giga Berlin grounds, and we can see that to the north of the factory, looks like a lot of those trees have already been cleared, and Tobias has drone videos showing that work being done. So Giga Berlin really starting to come along here, and it's exciting to see that expansion work underway. The other report that we have on Giga Berlin is from Maz.de. They are reporting, based on a report from an employment agency, that Tesla is currently assembling its staff for a third shift and battery production at Giga Berlin. So we've had quite a few different reports over the last couple of months on when that third shift is set to begin. I think the most recent one was in Q1, and the report alongside that was that that wouldn't affect Tesla's goal of 5,000 per week by the end of the year. All right, next we've got a very interesting feature update. Green, the only who often finds little interesting details in Tesla's code, says that 2022.40.4 merges no ultrasonics code into mainline and now receives parking distances from autopilot where not equipped with ultrasonics. In another tweet, Green says that this seems to be set up to mimic the feedback that the ultrasonic sensors give today, including locations, so front middle, front right, front middle right, etc. And that's kind of all we know right now. So I don't know if Tesla's kind of activated that feature or if it's just lying there in the code waiting to be activated in the future, probably the latter, but hopefully that's a really good sign that we may see this soon. I kind of expected this to take a while for Tesla to end up getting to feature parity for parking assist with the cameras alone. It's a pretty significant challenge. So it's extremely exciting if Tesla is close to that and I am very anxious to see this in action. Next, we've got another update on LinkedIn from Eager Group. Of course, they manufacture Tesla's Gigapress casting machines. They had just posted about getting the 9,000 ton Gigapress for the Cybertruck ready to go and ship to Tesla. And now they have posted another photo of a Gigapress part with the caption, next please, and a hashtag that includes Giga 9,000 ton. So that would seem to imply that they are working on another 9,000 ton Gigapress, which presumably would also be for Tesla perhaps another one for the Cybertruck. All right, next we've got a couple more updates out of Europe. We do now have the October registration numbers in Germany as well. A on D on Twitter, collecting some of this data nicely for us, looking at the first month of the quarter again here for the entirety of 2022. We have seen registrations in Germany in the first month of the quarter increase steadily from January's 419, now to October's 3,185. As the tweet mentions, it is still significantly below the roughly 14,000 from September, but the highest that we've seen so far by a decent amount may be a little bit of a sign of a flattening delivery wave, but since it is such a steep drop month over month, probably a sign actually that that delivery wave is still existing and that's going to take time to unwind, especially when we consider the impacts of Giga Berlin and its ramp throughout the year, that should naturally be increasing these first month deliveries anyway, regardless of any delivery wave with China. We've also got some broader data on the European Union as a whole for the entirety of the third quarter. Looking at pure battery electric vehicle market share here, for the third quarter, it was 11.9% in the EU. That was up from 9.8% in Q3 last year. So it's a decent gain, but I do think we'll see those gains accelerate. If we look at the year-over-year -year comparison, that was only a 22% increase. That was the fastest gaining category, and interestingly, plug-in hybrid EVs down 6% year-over-year. But I would expect that BEV number to grow a little bit faster next year. Even Giga Berlin alone should be able to drive a 22% increase on this for next year. Next, we've got a report from Goldman Sachs on the possible potential for a Tesla bot or humanoid robot. It's a very lengthy report. I'm not sure that it's really worth spending all that much time on because they say that they estimate that in 10 to 15 years, a market size of at least $6 billion is achievable for a humanoid robot. And they go on to say that they envision a blue sky scenario of a market cap of up to $154 billion by 2035. Uh, if that's their blue sky scenario, they need to look a little bit further because that is selling the potential here extremely short. Yeah, maybe it takes a little bit longer than 2035 to fully realize that potential, but in a blue sky scenario, 
fully realizing or getting close to fully realizing that potential is it's achievable. Maybe not probable, but certainly not impossible. So yeah, probably not worth spending a whole lot of time on that report. All right, last few items here. We've got an update from Ford. They have shared some information about their sales in the United States for October, announcing 2,436 F-150 Lightning sales and 3,055 Mustang Mach-E sales. Mustang Mach-E was up 7% year over year. Of course, no last year comparison for the F-150, but that was the best month for the F-150 so far, as of course, it continues to ramp up. That would now be at a rate of about 30,000 annually. Mustang Mach-E at about 36,000 which is really the ballpark it's been in for quite some time now, but obviously Ford overall ramping up volume with the addition of the F-150 Lightning. Next, some interesting regulation action from Canada. They have ordered three Chinese firms to divest from some small lithium mines based in Canada. This was after they had updated some guidelines, which had come out last week, making it more difficult for foreign state-owned companies to be involved in, according to this report, deals that target critical minerals like lithium, nickel, copper, etc. So interesting times right now. I mean, we've talked on a few occasions about the Inflation Reduction Act and the European Union's dismay with how it is structured. Now we see Canada being a little bit more protectionist on some of the things involving their critical minerals. It's like countries are kind of waking up to what's going to be unfolding here over the next decade or two and are wanting to make sure that they're protecting themselves in that kind of a transition. I think that's probably heightened, like we have talked about before, by everything that's playing out with the Russia and Ukraine war. Along those same lines, next story, Saudi Arabia definitely making moves in that direction too. They've, of course, invested heavily in Lucid, have had talks with Tesla back in that going private saga, and now their sovereign wealth fund has announced that they will be partnering with Foxconn to produce electric vehicles within Saudi Arabia. We've also talked on a few occasions about Foxconn's interest in EVs, so it'll continue to be interesting to see where they go with it. All right, lastly for today then, just wanted to share some quick thoughts on FSD Beta 10.69.3, drove it around last night. I think it's difficult to say without driving it for a longer period of time how significant improvements have been or not. Now, I certainly still had plenty of disengagements here in Milwaukee. Primarily, they seem to be relating to lane decisions, just kind of getting in the wrong spot and then the hesitancy and frustration for everybody else around due to that. So, so far it hasn't felt like a huge step forward to me, but it's going to be different for everybody. And again, it takes some time to really understand how much progress there has been. We really have to zoom out to get a better feel for that, but just wanted to at least share my early thoughts on that. But looking forward to continuing to test it out and hopefully continue to learn more. All right, that is it for today then. As always, thank you for listening. Make sure you're subscribed and signed up for notifications. You can also find me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast. I'll see you tomorrow for the Friday, November 4th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.